tell you a story about how we use peers across international borders to help build a community of women engineers in Liberia, West Africa. In Liberia, less than 10% of their engineering student population are women. An exploratory study conducted on the experiences of these female engineering students in Liberia found that a major void in, the in, the, in their experiences uh, as engineering students was the lack of a support network. For many of these female, uh, uh, for many of these students, their primary support to pursue engineering is their immediate family. But in order to attend the university, they are forced to move away from their family and often live with extended family who are not necessarily supportive of their educational and professional pursuits. I started working in Liberia in the summer of 2013 as a, an instructor for their engineering camp. The, uh, one of the primary goals of this camp was to attract more women into their engineering program by providing educational opportunities such as the summer camp. One idea to uh, achieve this goal was to have half the participants of the summer camp be women. So after extensive recruitment uh, efforts, we had 20 female engineering students alongside 20 male students uh, attend the camp. This is a great achievement considering the number of women in their engineering program. After the first couple of weeks uh, of this camp, I noticed that beyond the prevalent discrimination uh, from their male counterparts, which needed uh, instructor intervention on a daily basis, but beyond that, the female uh, engineering students felt an added pressure to prove their abilities among their female peers. As one student uh, la later said, guys don't really care. That's the frustrating part. They assume no girls uh, can be the first. The competition is mostly among the female students. The drastic increase in concentration of female students at the camp resulted in an unhealthy competition among these students. So our goal of attracting more women into the engineering program by increasing their numbers had taken an unexpected and very unfortunate turn. I, along with my uh, co-instructors, uh, decided to talk to the female students about how they can achieve common goals by supporting each other rather than uh, competing against each other. We shared personal stories about how we persisted uh, in our engineering education with the help of support networks, specifically the Society of Women Engineers, SWE or SWE. The students were excited. They began calling themselves the Liberia Society of Women Engineers. They modeled themselves after SWE student chapters that are very common across universities in the US. They conducted meetings, they uh, set goals for their group, and they also planned events during the camp. After the camp ended, so did their enthusiasm. <laughs> there were only a couple of students who continued to envision the community of female engineers in Liberia a few months after the camp. We reflected on the student organizations that we are, were a part of and we wondered what actually makes them work on our campuses. One reason that resonated with all of us was peers. All my friends are doing it, that's why I'm doing it. Haven't we heard that before? And the more engaged our peers are, the more engaged we become. So it dawned on us that we can potentially rekindle the enthusiasm from that summer camp by connecting the Liberian students to peers who are already engaged in a community of female engineers. Sweet. So we developed a leadership camp that was uh, to be collaborative, collaboratively, collaborate, sorry, <laughs> collaboratively organized by SWE members at the University of Michigan and members in Liberia. The goal of this camp was to develop a <clears throat> community of women engineers in Liberia and also to foster cross-cultural interactions between engineering peers. So in the summer of 2015, 35 undergraduate students, five from the University of Michigan, 30 Liberian students from 
three universities across Liberia participated in a collaboratively organized leadership camp. A number of the workshops in the camp were dedicated to development and sustaining of a student organization. The Liberian students again uh, elected their organizational committees and began to plan, plan events. But this time, the camp ended, but the Liberia Society of Women Engineers survived. Both the cohorts of students continued to stay connected even after the camp and encouraged each, each other to stay engaged in this community. It's been seven months since the camp and the Liberia Society of Women Engineers is flourishing. In the month of March itself, they had two events organized. Uh, they spent International Day, uh, Day of Women uh, talking to mi middle schoolers and high schoolers about women in engineering. And they have another networking event planned for the end of this month. This collaboration also had some unexpected outcomes. <clears throat> we, we brought together women from four different universities not only socially as a support network, but also professionally. Two of the Liberian students who did not know each other before the summer of 2015 have worked together and co-authored an abstract to the SWE conference happening later this year. Tonight, I want you to think about peer collaborations that you can make happen, because all we have to do is connect. They will create and change Valencia. Thank you.